DSP's dream. I love dream interpretation. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, basically, dreams could have all kinds. I had a dream the other day. Just how weird this one was. It's not coherent because, you know, when you have dreams, half the time it's not coherent. I had a dream that I was, I guess I was invited to a friend's party, like a summertime party, but also was invited to like a wedding celebration. But somehow in my head, I got them confused and my parents were coming with me and they were expecting that we were going to have like a big formal dinner because it was a wedding. But we ended up at the party and we were having like cookout food. And so my parents were confused because they thought that we were going to have, like, a big dinner. But instead, we're eating, like, like stuff you would bake in the oven, like a big cookie bake. And they cut it into squares. You're eating snack foods and stuff. And they were like, oh, is this what we're eating? I was like, yeah, I guess it's still good. Like, we all liked it anyway in the dream. But it was such a weird dream. Now, what does that dream mean? Absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> what does it have to do with me at 41 years old? Nothing at all. It's just a weird dream, you know. But some Obviously, it does have something to do. It has a lot to do. It's really interesting. And there's loads to unpack, so we'll go back. They thought that we were, we ended up in celebrity, like a side of It's not coherent because, you know, when you have dreams, half the time it's not coherent. I had a dream that I was, I guess I was invited to a friend's party. Like A friend's party, first of all, is where he's first invited. And this area of the stream that he's waving his hands around, on the one side, this area of the stream, that is... It's, it's well it's a few things it's the area where his chat where he controls his chat where he looks at his chat where he leans in bands that's the friends party isn't it it's all friends isn't it in the chat but also it's towards the closet where he's hidden away some of his past his actual friends that he used to have parties with would be the street fighter crowd when he actually literally had cookouts with his you know friends way way back uh, I say friends people that he played street fighter with um, then he had John Rambo and um, Howard. He did, he did. John Rambo was his friend, but he did legitimately uh, state that Howard was not his friend. <laughs> was just someone he played video games with. But I think that occupies that space over there, and I think it's got a, a masculine sort of vibe and energy to it. I think. But that's yeah. So friends over there. A summertime. A summertime. He's doing this sort of juggly thing with his hands. It could represent the playing on the computer games. Uh, you'd normally look at these hand gestures and feel some sort of sense of control. Having a sense of control. He certainly does with his chat. Party, but also... And his recent event streams, he's called DSP's Summer Street Summer Party. What was it? DSP's Digital Summer Party. Yeah, Digital Summer Party. But also was invited to like a wedding celebration. But he was also invited to a wedding celebration, which is over on this side over here, which he doesn't seem so satisfied with or um, seems a little worried by with his facial expression. And of course he's married, yeah? And on this side of things with the wedding celebration, uh, it's away to the door, which is where Kat is outside the office, outside the door. But it's also on this side where he has the keyboard for the administration part of the stream where he has to, typey typey in the admin which is a little bit of frustration to him i think like you think he feels even though he enjoys typing in the, the money and all that like the fact he has to lean over and crown crane his head round, i think he is slightly frustrated every time he has to do that so i'm feeling a sense of the alternative between um partying with his friends playing video games and uh a sense of the past you know the cookouts john rambo uh juxtaposed against this sense of duty the admin the marriage a cat maybe but somehow in my head i got them confused so he's got these two parties confused in his head and my parents were coming with me and they were expecting that we were going to have like a big formal dinner because it was so now the parents are coming with him right and there's pressure from the parents they're expecting a big formal dinner well that's a wedding isn't it that's all the expectations that come along with adulthood, formality, uh, being a grown-up, marrying a woman, formal things, the outward signs of a marriage, the the big formal dinner, the the suit and tie, the outward signs of a marriage, the things that you know maybe um, I don't I don't think children come into this necessarily in this dream heavily, but you know what Phil presents to us when he talks about his day off, when he talks about his family. 
he's talking about those outward signs of a marriage, what it looks like to be stood next to your wife, to, you know, to have these. It, it, Phil, being a narcissist, of course, he thinks of other people in terms of uh, resources, objects. You know, it's about outward signs of a marriage, isn't it? The pageantry of it all. It's a wedding, but we ended up at the party. But they ended up at the party. So his parents are brought into this. He's taking his parents to the party. Now, it could be legitimately, you know, he's, his parents and he feels ashamed in front of his parents about the way his life has turned out. Um, but it could also be the pressures of the parents that he's carrying with him, that he's internalised in his mind as this figure of his parents, but he feels the same pressures himself to, you know, to live up to these standards. But it could also be that he himself feels a bit like his parents, like a bit old school, a bit, um, like he's created this phantom other people to represent this feeling of uh, disconnection, not being part of the group, but being judgmental over the group. Uh, so there's a lot of other feelings mixed up in that. But him and his parents are visiting the wrong party now. They're, they're supposed to be going to the formal wedding, but now they're at this cookout group. And we were having like cookout food. And so my parents were confused because they thought that we were gonna have like a big dinner, but instead we're eating like, like stuff you would bake in the oven, like a big cookie bake and they cut it into squares. So childish food maybe. And his parents are confused because they thought they would have, be having a substantial dinner but instead they're in, well of course on his on his event streams his wife literally cooks in the last stream it was en sloppy enchiladas cheesy enchiladas um, there was some other sloppy like on party food plates like his wife what he thought maybe should be a more substantial relationship and role is providing and this is the dreams of a narcissist remember so you might think it's all about certain subtexts and insecurities and stuff and it may be but there's also to me a sense of entitlement come through here that his wife is not providing in the marriage to the level of pageantry that he thought she would he's recently had it on streams as well and he's going to do it again tonight have her on a stream i don't think she's coming up to, like he thought she was going to be this substantive meal this um not deep down you know this um icon of pageantry this wife figure but she's not lived up to the <laughs> instead it's party food and it's cookies and childishness and his parents are not happy maybe this is a sense of not living up to his parents not satisfying his parents but it's him in his dream that's living these emotions and having his parents there acts as a pressure but it's his feelings and his emotions so it's not living up to his perceptions of what the marriage should be maybe but remember, he's taken them there. He didn't take his parents to a dinner at the wedding and they were expecting a cookout and instead they were faced with this serious and adult form of the marriage. No, uh, he took them to the cookout and they were expecting a wedding. He felt the pressure of the wedding, but instead he turned it into a cookout. So that's how he's approached his own marriage, yeah? He was supposed to have like a serious wedding and like he said himself he doesn't want to have children that's been broached before but he's turned it into this facile and unsubstant like he said himself about like i think the sense of substance he talks about the word robust like you know he's turned it into party food and maybe that's not really what he'd hoped for eating snack foods and stuff and they were like oh is this what we're eating i was like yeah i guess it's still good like we all liked it anyway in the dream but we all liked it anyway in the dream. I don't know if that is even true. I don't know if he, you know, is even lying to everyone about his dreams because he felt a sense of shame in the dream about, is this what we're eating? And whether he turned to his parents and said, yeah, it's great, I enjoy this food. Or whether he said, oh, sorry, oh God, and felt a, such a deep sense of shame that he didn't want to reveal that. But maybe he did, maybe he does like that food. And his the pressure of his parents weighing on him doesn't matter to him because he actually does like just junk food and being a kid and the cookout and the kids party and he didn't ever want to grow up so he just hasn't and his wife um needs to have that pressure removed from trying to pretend to be a wife and pretend to be a uh, you know we're a family and we're this and we're that and it would be better if he was just out in the open it's funny having all these hot dogs on the microphones like this because it's making the point uh, that it'd be just better out in the open just enjoying what he enjoys and being honest about it which is why I'm going to give a second subtext read to this as well, but we'll get to that in a second. It was just a weird dream. Now, what does that dream mean? 
absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> what does that have to do with me at 41 years old? Nothing at all. So he asserts that it means absolutely fucking nothing. Hyperbole, use of the word fucking, Freudian, <laughs> absolutely fucking nothing. And uh, at 41, so he specifies as well that it's about a certain time in his life, age. He specified it at 41. It means nothing. It would have meant something maybe at a different age, but now at 41, it means nothing. But it seems heavily layered with uh, with symbolism, doesn't it? Oh, it's just a weird dream, you know? But sometimes dreams can have meaning. They could have something from your subconscious that's nagging at you or something, and, you know, it formulates. So he then specifies it could be something that's nagging at him. So, and then as the dream therapist, to listen to him, and hear what he said there, that got out. It's something that's nagging at him. You can see a horror movie, and then all of a sudden you dream about the horror because you were scared. You know. uh, there's a sound effect going on, but he says there's a horror movie, and you could dream about a horror movie, and it could be something that's scared. So we were feeling shame. His parents were over him. He'd gone to the wrong place. Like These feelings in a dream can actually be quite unsettling. Horror movies, sense of... Uh, um, dis oh, there's a dis word for it dissociation like dissatisfaction with where you are like a, you know an unfamiliar feeling discomfort like i don't think he felt good in the dream even though he presented the food to his parents said no this is good food i enjoy it uh maybe there's a sense of discomfort going on behind the, like you know underneath that uh, and he's brought up nagging feelings and horror movies afterwards that kind of stuff happens so <laughs> Now he's reading chat. Huh? Birdman says, what was the last one? And he's off. Right. So he took the opportunity as well. I think he was getting to something there, but instead he immediately picked up the distraction instead. Like he could have carried... Phil can talk. He, can, he doesn't have to focus on chat. He can talk. Yeah? But he went somewhere and he decided to distract so he wasn't feeling comfortable with it and he related it to horror movies not his particular dream he said oh dreams can be like this but this one wasn't really but of course it just made me think of horror movies and uh nagging so nagging and the wife thing but somehow in my head i got them confused my dreams have the other day basically dreams could have all kind i had a dream the other day just how weird this one was so on surface or on first read, I'm saying unfulfilled obligations from Kat make him feel that the marriage isn't what he had hoped for. But at the same time, he is turning to his parents and to the other pressures on him and feeling that he hasn't served up a substantial offering for his marriage. But at the same time, that's what he enjoys. It was the the cookout party that he wanted to attend. That's where he took the parents. That's, you know, that's what he feels comfortable with and enjoys. He liked that. The food tasted great, didn't it? You know, that's what he feels comfortable with. He felt less comfortable with the formality of the marriage and the pageantry of the marriage. So, narcissist, cat's not doing enough to be a good wife, but also narcissist, I don't really want a good wife. I want to fuck about eating hot dogs and playing video games. And my parents are this sense of obligation and like a spectre over me is like a pressure. But in some ways he agrees with the old school vibe. You know, he has that same heart as well. Like he felt, the reason he feels that pressure is because he internalized it young and it's like part of him in some way, yeah? Um, that's my initial overall read. But I want to do a read based on whether he's repressed and it's going to sound bad i'm not trying to rip at him for being gay yeah because being gay is perfectly okay but i do think phil potentially has quite repressed latent homosexual feelings um and i just want to do another reader to see whether like you can sort of infer that from his dream it's not coherent because you know when you have dreams have so the first thing is that uh, basically dreams when he says dreams here, he starts thinking about his dreams. And I think there's a first dream that he kind of thinks and writes off. Or there's a part of the dream that he thinks and writes off. Could have all kinds. I had a dream the other day. This is how weird this one was. I had a dream the other day. This is how weird this one was. And are you going to say this first bit of the dream or the last bit of the dream or part of this dream that stands out to you that you're thinking about? 
Uh, part of me thinks that he's making it up as well because of his neurolinguistic programming eyes here going the wrong way. It's not a good sign the way he's looking. Might be just making this up. But it might have been <coughs> like um, mental editing of like removing the bit at the start. Because it, it gives a mouth, it gives that. Uh, it's not coherent. Could have all kind. I had a dream the other day. Just how weird this one was. He moves his mouth. Uh, uh, he doesn't say it. Something was going to come out. Uh, no. And then he like, has a retake on it and starts talking. So I think there was a first thought that got edited off. Could have all kind. I had a dream the other day. Just how weird this one was. It's not coherent because, you know, when you have dreams, half the time it's not. And then uh, when you, uh, it's not coherent because when you have dreams, um, he gave a little eyebrow raise, like convincing. So the th it's not coherent. It means you can't read anything into this bad about him. And the thing that he wanted to edit off was probably the thing you could read most about it. You know, did he take John Rambo to this party instead of Cat? Was there somebody else in the dream with him that he's edited out? You know, and coherent. I had a dream that I was, I guess I was invited to a friend's party. Like a friend's party. So who's the friend? And he's put it, like I said, he's put it over there with all that memories from the cupboard and the chat and all that. But this hands holding, like, yeah. Like a summertime party. Oh. Summertime vibes. Party, but also was invited to like. Reminds me of uh, ALT and Steve of the Dead and Atlas the Bookkeeper have been doing these deep dives on WPIG uh, and the Dead Sea Scrolls going way back. Dark Side Phil had a cookout party, a load of lads, swimming pool, a uh, new grill that he insisted on, and this whole summertime vibe. You know, it's a very. I said it in the first read through, but it's a very male oriented male sort of, um, but you've got the summertime vibe, which makes me think semi naked male swimming, so, swimming, sh like summertime vibe. What's summertime vibe? Swimming shorts. Yeah. Semi naked males. So on the one hand, we've got where I feel more comfortable, where I'm happier and I'm prepared to grab out and grab hold of, uh, but then I need to sort of push down is the semi naked males. Yeah. Like a wedding celebration. Which would have been your friends as well. Friends, summertime vibes. Um, but then this wedding. Oh, wedding. What do I want with a wedding? A strange. I was also had the option of a wedding. But somehow in my head, I got them confused. And I got confused between my feelings. It's going looking for Adolf Hitler in the garden again. Got confused between my feelings about my friends and the summertime naked young boys that I remember hanging out with by the pool and my wedding. <laughs> Somehow I got those two feelings confused in my subconscious. What I wanted for myself and what I... Because he did have a wedding. He did get dressed up. They didn't do a big formal dinner or anything. But what happened, and this is my opinion, so you'll have to deal with it, um, but he went, well, part of it's my opinion, part of it's fact. He went back home with Kat, his girlfriend, and they went to visit his mom and dad. That's a fact. And then they got married when they were there. That's a fact. They didn't go to any big service or anything. I think they got it done at the house with a registrar, and then they went to the town hall and signed the documents. Uh, or they had, you know, someone come to the house and they went to the town hall with the documents. They didn't have a big dinner or invite lots of friends or anything. They got married, though. Yeah? And then they went home and he got some money off his mom. They're facts. So I think he went home with Kat and his mom said to him, when are you getting married? And he said, we're not planning to get married. And she said something like, well, I've been saving money for your wedding. And if you don't want it because you're not going to get married, then I've got 17 grand in the bank that's just going to sit there. And he said, oh, we will get married then. I mean, if that, yeah, yes, we will. And she said, right, well, where do you want to have the wedding and the honeymoon? And he said, well, 17 grand's a lot of money. Why don't we just have the, the wedding right here now? And then I can have the money. I'll just have all the money. Like, we won't spend it. I'll, I'll take it for the honeymoon. And then we just won't do a honeymoon. So I'll spend the money. And I, you know, I think he just like strong armed himself into the wedding because there was money as an option. 
it's, if there's 17 grand in the bank for the wedding and we do the wedding and it only costs five, what can I, can I keep 12? I think that's what happened really. So that's my opinion bit is the reason for the getting married. But they went there, they got married, he came home. So he didn't have a big formal wedding. But in his dream, this concept of this wedding, like he's saying it as if it's an option to this party, somewhere his parents were going to go and sit and have a formal dinner, a substantial dinner. So he's imagining that formal pageantry of the wedding, isn't he? Uh, but in his head, he got the two confused between summertime vibes with young men by the pool. I'm adding the pool, but... And uh, getting married in a formal setting and being public about your love in a formal way and it being substantial and fulfilling and filling and you know food Freud says like you know Freud is people always bring up Freud when they talk about sex Freudian slip when it, you want to have sex with your mom and Sigmund Freud um, but the food thing right when you're a kid like the first thing this is the first thing you get satisfaction from when you're a child is doing a poop or a wee wee <laughs> because your, your bladder feels full or whatever and you you, you know it's relief so you feel the relief and obviously you do it in your nappy as well so like some people just stop at that and then when they're grown ups they're like i still really enjoy that that's my favorite feeling obviously there's pr process and development this is freud maybe mainly so it's not like the facts but it's freud's opinions and ideas maybe that ground certain more f further ideas in psychology um you move on from that obviously you should because you have to hold that and then go into the toilet when you're supposed to but uh, there's other things that you can find satisfying that you don't have to have a sex drive for, but are very satisfying as a human being. And that would be eating as well. That's definitely on the on the list because you can feel very full and satisfied and it can be very, very um, sensory. Like the fats and the sugars can give you a bit of a neuro overload in the old dopamine. So eating counts. Like ideally, a well-balanced human being can experience pleasure, but not become addicted to the pleasure source. You know, ideally, a well-balanced human being can... Uh, experience sexual gratification from different ideas around a spectrum but maybe I mean I don't know if it is ideal to not fetishize or to fetishize maybe I shouldn't fetish shame in that way but I would say personal opinion it's probably ideal that you could have a bit of kinky fun but not want to shit in a nappy to get hard do you know what I mean so but anywhere in that spectrum can also happen because of arrested development during those processes um and every child, including you and me, all of us, every child, uh, learns their own sexuality by, you know, feelings and stuff happening. So, like, um, whether it be sliding down a banister or, like, or whatever, like, oh, that felt funny, you know. So everyone might have a different experience and then attach something different to their early or nascent sexuality, according to Freud. Um, and that might be the sort of thing you like when you get grown up more. Uh, you know, maybe it's whomever you first fantasized about when you were a kid, or maybe it's like the fact that you sat down in a sweaty puddle, but the puddle got all in your bum crack and you go, and now you like puddles or some shit. I don't know. But um, those ideas, yeah, talking about Phil and his ideas, that's why I'm talking about this. I've got to keep on track, right? <laughs> Phil and his ideas is because uh, Phil is associating this, like what I would consider um, the sensory the sort of more sensuous aspect was the party, the party food, the uh, summertime vibe, he said, were his exact words. And I'd say, I, I would love to be able to question him deeper about it. What does summertime vibe really mean to you? Does it mean shirts off by the pool? If it's a cookout with the boys and girls there, or is it just your memory of your male peers at the time? When Jamie came over, why did you have to go in your room and knock one out? Um, so... You know, we've got those questions. Uh, and then he's a light, like that formality of the wedding, the bit with the, theoretically the woman uh, or the parents, they were a more traditional couple, weren't they? They loom over this. So is there a pressure to sort of work your feelings about your sexuality, sensuality, feeling full, feeling hot under the sun, half naked, the water, full feeling of the food, sensuality, ergo maybe sexuality, something he's not telling us is that being forced into this framework of a marriage in some way is that you telling me that you would just like to go out with a boy is that what you're trying to tell me you know and that you've repressed that to the point where you can't even understand your own dreams because he may have woken up with a boner thinking about john rambo's back while he applies the sun cream and my parents and that would have been fine as well i'm not ripping him for that 
I'm like, it's okay to be gay. Well, it's probably less, or probably more funny, or worth a bit of a ridicule on the internet is to be like deeply, deeply repressed to the point where you didn't know it yourself, but would reveal it in strange and complicated dreams. I wish he would tell us more about his dreams, but I fear that if he ever hears me talking like this, he will never ever mention one again. <laughs> coming with me and they were expecting that we were gonna have like a big formal dinner because it was a wedding but we ended up at the party and we were having like cookout food and so my parents were confused because they thought that we were gonna have like a big dinner but instead we're eating and again it's his parents confusion and not his so symbology in dreams his parents could be him and his feelings and they could represent an aspect of his psyche um and he could be confused about his own feelings but also he might not be confused about why he's enjoying the cookout food and why they've gone to that party instead he might you know that's his drives and desires that's what he wants but looming over him is this uh public facing attitude of the parents old school confusion why do i enjoy this why don't i want to grow up and go to the wedding why don't i want the, wo the woman and the wife and the substantial meal why do i prefer hot dogs and burgers like it's lovely having all these hot dogs here like this you know, why do I prefer hot dogs? And it's okay to prefer hot dogs, mate. It's fine. Like, like stuff you would bake in the oven, like a big cookie bake, and they cut it into squares. But he didn't specify hot dogs. He specified a big cookie bake you could bake in the oven in squares. And that feels very cat-oriented, doesn't it? Because his wife does this cooking downstairs and then provides it sort of in sloppy format. But a big cookie... And that, that, again, that's where you'd need to question Phil. The best thing about Dream Association and and stuff you, you just have to uh, the sad thing for us but the best thing is like it's all about what they if you ask them 10 more questions about cookies you'll get somewhere and all you have to do is just say and tell me about cookies then does the cookie remind you of any other kind of cookie you've ever seen in your life when did you last have a cookie like that you know and you get those questions going and he will reveal and reveal and reveal and then you'll be really getting somewhere what do these cookies represent is what i'm saying to us at a surface level or on this surface level um you're saying some really interesting stuff in chat i'm not picking it all up am i big ups though um the uh the um the cookie for me is yeah definitely warm sweet maternal oh I mean, it's it's like a classic as well isn't it it's like a child childhood classic something formed like he baked it in the oven like this is baked and cut up maybe it's like in a big portion for other kids as well maybe a school thing maybe we're going like right deep to the heart of like you know why you like what you like and why you are who you are and i just like it it's just what i like since when i was little this warm sweet brown chocolatey feel like scat talk you know half melted chocolate chip doughy sort of cookie he likes his scat talk i don't know like he just these are the things that I'm thinking, but they might he might attach something completely different to his early feelings about cookies or whatever, whatever he thinks about it. Um, but to me, I think it's just this sort of, almost as well, it's all, like, it's so big, it was this big tray bake, so it's just like, big, but it got cut up into smaller bits and he only got a small piece of it. Um, so it's like a big problem that he can't deal with all at once, can't eat it all at once, he has to take it in small portion so he's not seeing the whole picture uh, but he liked the bit that he got i wonder if he had some sort of experience when he was younger so you're eating snack foods and stuff you're eating snack foods and stuff and it's not a proper dinner so now he has to get that pleasure in small parts small doses small snacks i'm scared about the child aspect of it of course but i'm not suggesting he's a nonce full-on nonce but um you know the childish aspect of the cookies and the snack food Al al aligning with what I'm suggesting could be not definitely are but could be revelations about internal instincts of sexuality certainly a wedding following a wedding you would have sex like that's just like a major thing of it <laughs> when I was a kid I used to think that I know some couples do don't they they don't have sex until they're married but when I was a kid I used to think that the reason the honey honeymoon sex was so important was because it was the first time that they got to have sex that's what I literally thought. Like when I was a kid, like, you know, when I was like eight years old and I was watching the the, the films and, you know, in films there's quite often a wedding and a honeymoon and like, it's all, they're going to have sex, aren't they? Because it's the honeymoon. And like, obviously you do, but now as a grown up, I realise that it probably won't be the first, well, it could be, because I'm yet to get married. It could still be the first time that I get to have sex with my wife. 
but like you'd think that like some of the excitement and the edge would be taken off the honeymoon sex it wouldn't be just like the films because whilst it would be good because you'd have the wedding dress and the hotel like you would definitely have done the sex before though it wouldn't that bit wouldn't be a surprise yeah but for phil in this context we're talking about a substantial meal after which you might want to put your feet up there might be speeches to be done at a wedding might be all formal but after that it's for phil in his real life it's you know should we have sex tonight honey no i'm busy playing wwe champions and you don't want to touch me either so we're all good but uh you know in the dream that sense of foreboding the the big speeches the formality of the wedding is going to lead to sex like it's a you have the cake you do the speeches you get in the car and they go just married and then you go and have the sex like it's like another, another obligation hanging over you isn't it so um i'm saying that he's diverted from like in his dream the sequence went there was my parents we went to this thing they were expecting this wedding and the formality so that must have come into his mind in some way their expectations the wedding the formality but instead we're going to this other place and so is there going to be sex after this other place or is this representative of your feelings about where you'd like the sex to go i might be reaching on that one but it is a logical formality that after a wedding celebration if you're pre presenting yourself in the dream as the groom you might be obligated to have some sex and he might be worried about that and just want to have hot dogs instead and they were like oh is this what we're eating i was like yeah i guess it's still good like we all liked it anyway in the dream Maybe he tries to convince his parents it's good, knowing full well inside that it's not really what he wanted and his marriage isn't fulfilling. And that these little snacks would be much better if they were a substantial meal, i.e. his wife was a man. <laughs> I told you I'd have to give it a read like this. No, but... but it was such a weird dream. Now, what does that dream mean? Absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> it means absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> what does that <laughs> to do with me at 41 years what does it have to do with me at 41 years oh nothing especially not if you're 41 it's old nothing at all it's just a weird dream you know but sometimes dreams can have meaning they could have some but sometimes they can as in like this one definitely did something from your subconscious that's nagging could be nagging at you so this could be a problem that's going to brew like he's recently had cat on the streams he's made a lot of his position in life about how he's happy with it all As much as he nags us about being happy that he's got a family and he's happy, maybe something's nagging at him that he's not. And maybe he's trying to prove it by getting Cat on and proving it to the world about how great their relationship is. But maybe he feels instinctively there's something missing. Nagging at you or something and, you know, it formulates. You can see a horror movie and then all of a sudden you dream about the horror because you were scared. You know, that kind of stuff happens. So... <laughs> And instead of alighting on it any further and giving it much more thought, I do think this is a definite technique from Phil. Like, he almost looks like he might be about to cry. So I think when some sort of feelings come into the play, because he was talking about his dreams and saying there's no feelings attached. And then he was giving examples of why there's no feelings attached. And it could be that there was feelings attached to these other dreams, but not to this dream. And then talking about feelings, whether denying them or not. Like he, uh, This is really interesting. We've done an episode on thus check out on super chuffer if you're watching this on battery exhausted go and watch my other channel super chuffer as well you chuffer um and uh, on thus with steve we did an episode of thus about denial and like phil lives in a state of denial as a narcissist so when the feelings come in is when he has to shut down and the denial comes in even like the denial caused the feelings to be revisited because he's denying the feelings so then he just absolutely just says right we're not thinking about that anymore we're reading this comment in chat and we're going to move away from that whole conversation now into something else completely different. And I don't ever have to think about it again unless I don't want to. He swivels the chair as well. Like, in a, like he can't get huh? up and move. He rocks about sometimes, but he can't get up and go away. But it's almost almost like a sort of mental reset. Like he sort of swivels the chair around as if to say, like, right, we're in a different phase space now. Huh? Birdman says, what was the last release you played that didn't have any significant... Oh, this is really interesting. Much more interesting than my revelations about my personal feelings about my marriage. Significant bugs. They're so prevalent these days. Oh, I don't know. 
you have to look at the games that I'm playing right now. Like, I don't think Like a Dragon has any bugs, right? Um, Tekken. Um, so we'll cut that for YouTube. Just a quick one. You know, Dark Side Phil and his dreams. I love psychoanalyzing people's dreams. It doesn't matter who they are. And I should be doing more Phil content. You know, I should pay a little bit. Everyone in the Detractor universe on DSP has got their own bit of the space, haven't they? And, like, does a really good job on it. So unless I find a really specific niche... It's not my obligation to cover everything, but I do like to dip my toe in every now and then. You know, I do like to make sure I have a swimming river fill <laughs> just to confirm how filthy it is. <laughs> and I want to reiterate, I'm not homophobic. It doesn't matter to me that Phil's gay. I, I'd feel happier if he was out, like for him, because it'd be fine. But it's a bit sad for him to be so deeply repressed. That's all. You be good. If you can't be good, you're naughty. That's for uh, YouTube. I can carry on talking now. I'll do this again so that everyone knows where the edit is. Everyone being me on my own in the edit. And I won't need to do this because I'll have heard myself say the last bit. All right, we'll leave this on now. Since you said by YouTube, I'll leave this on as well. Torture the battery boy. There you go, torture the battery boy. 